Welcome to 1923 Main Street. Home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellobranic. And I'm Amelia Bellobranic. And today, you'll be answering the question, what's your Disney traveler DNA? Yes, what type of Disney traveler are you? And for that matter, am I? And what are you, Amelia? Don't answer that question yet. I'm going to say something here. This is going to be a interactive episode if you want to play along. So right now, I'll give you a moment to pause this show and go get yourself a pencil and paper or get your phone ready on notepad or something if you want to play along. So if you want to play along and find out your Disney travel DNA, pause now and then rejoin us. And we're back if you paused. (laughs) And if you didn't, we're still here. All right, so what is your Disney travel DNA? Well, there are a few options. Before I get into those, I want to say why it's important. Do you know why it's important, or should I answer that for you? Well, because it can help you find out what you want to do when you're there. And also, I used to say when I did travel for people, when I was a travel agent for a few years, it's really important to know in a family or group of friends or who's ever going, if you guys have different Disney travel DNAs. And in other words, Disney travel types, because if one person's one way and another person's another way, they might get into conflicts in their day or in the park. And what I did is just so you know what we're going to do today over the, you know, last 50 years of travel and being a travel agent and writing the blog and the podcast and so on. I came up with what I've seen as the six types of Disney traveler. So we're going to go through those six types today and the result of that will be your personal Disney travel DNA. And you don't, you could be just one, but I've shown you them, Amelia. I don't know your answer yet, but do you think you're just one? No. I don't think really anybody would be just one. So your DNA is your unique mix yeah. of how many of these you are and in what percentage. And you can obviously be the majority of one, but everybody has, I feel, a little bit of something else. Exactly. So what we're going to do, maybe we'll start by talking about the six categories. And this is where you might want to write them down if you're listening and you want to play along because at the end, you're going to put together your DNA and what percentage of each one you are or of which ones because I don't really know anyone who's all six who I've done this with. So shall we begin with the categories? Okay, so number one, the park buster. The park buster. I call the park buster. So write down the park buster. To me... This is the most classic of all the Disney traveler types, right? They're theme park fanatics. They're the kind of person who wants to do four parks in one day or every ride and all that sort of stuff. What other things about the Park Buster do you think? I think they're the type of people that would do both extra magic hours. They like get up really early and they'd stay up late. Yeah. They don't mind crowds. They can take standing in line to some degree. And they just love being inside the parks, right? That's everything to them. And even on busy days, that park buster will be in their element. But they know the parks really well. So they have tricks up their sleeves. They know where the shortcuts are. They know where to go and when and all that sort of stuff. They're pretty high energy. Are you a park buster at all? To some degree. All right. So we'll keep that. So that is number one. What is Disney traveler type number two? The Disney planner. Ooh, the Disney planner. And no, this is not a notebook. This is a person. Yes, this is a person. This is the person who loves that well-planned Disney vacation. And to the Disney planner, the only good Disney vacation is one that is well-planned. They're happiest when all their meals or fast passes or park passes, they're locked in early. They know exactly what they're doing and when they're doing it. You know, they live with their My Disney Experience app and they take comfort in knowing exactly what's happening morning, noon, and night. They don't want to leave things to chance. They don't get happy when things don't go as planned. Or when rides are shut down. Or when rides are shut down. Or torrential downpour. Yes. Animal Kingdom. All those things can make the Disney planner uneasy. And if you're with the Disney planner and you want to change something on the fly, are they going to like that? Probably not. Probably not. It's going to cause great stress for the Disney planner. But secretly, secretly, they actually love the challenge of having to rejig their schedule on the fly. Do they? Yes, they do. They won't ever let you know that, though. They'll they'll be like, oh, my gosh, oh, I can't believe it. But really inside, their juices are flowing because they get to 
figure out how to fix this. And, and I will say that most travel groups would actually probably benefit from having a Disney planner somewhere in the mix. As long as you understand their traveler type, then, you know, you can try to uh, ease them along. So I feel the Park Buster stressed. and the planner mesh very well. They can or they cannot, because the Park Buster might want to go off the beaten track and sort of adapt on the fly because they know their way around. Is that the Park Buster, though, or is that another type? Well, Daddy? let's go. What is the next type? Now... Before you say the next type, I'm going to say in advance, this is the most rare of all the travel types. What is the most rare? The carefree Disney traveler. <laughs> carefree. Now, I am a carefree Disney traveler. <laughs> you know, I'm Mr. Easygoing on Disney vacations. So this podcast is in some sort of parallel universe then? <laughs> so what you're saying is I'm not a carefree Disney traveler. I'd say Daddy is negative 100% a carefree Disney yeah, traveler. I am not. I'm joking. Negative 100. I am not at all not a carefree best. Disney traveler, as much as I like to think I am. I'm not really. So what is a carefree Disney You're traveler? You're not a carefree traveler. <laughs> that's right. All right. That's fair enough. Sometimes I like to think that I am, but let me let me read my own definition, and you tell me if this is me or if this is you, if you're listening. Are you relaxed about how you approach your Disney vacation? You take things as they come. You don't get too stressed when things don't go as planned. The opposite of the one we just talked about, by the way. You're easygoing. You know, you can enjoy yourself no matter what happens. You may not even care to go to the parks. But the Carefree Disney Traveler, and I know some, they do exist. In fact, there are some in our own family. Like me. Mm, not quite. <laughs> not you. Some of your uh, aunts. Are, oh. And yeah, and uncles are carefree Disney travelers. But the carefree Disney traveler, the good thing about them... They might not want to go to the parks, though. That's true, but they can also have a calming effect on those around them when things go wrong. So it is nice to or have... Or they can just stress the other person out more. No, they'll, they'll usually help you chill down. So it's nice to have them in your group <laughs> for those mm -hmm. times when things happen. Because they're like Hakuna Matata is the carefree Disney traveler. They really can help you take it easy if something doesn't go your way. I, Meditation to the fullest. Do you think you have any carefree in you without giving it away? I'm not going to spoil it All right, because you're if you not keep asking it. me. So that was number three. Write that down, the carefree Disney traveler. Let's move on to number four. The Disney historian. The Disney historian. I love. I, I am definitely part Disney historian. So the Disney historian loves soaking up. Disney history and everything surrounds them. The Disney historian in your group is the person that notices things and the Disney details that most other people miss, right? What would a Disney historian see? Well, a Disney historian would probably look for certain special ghosts in the graveyard of the Haunted Mansion. And our last episode, or, or two episodes ago, yeah, two episodes ago, Hidden Mickeys, the historian's going to want to find some of those. Disney historian will likely do some advanced research so they know what to look for. They're going to want to immerse themselves on the things and know where they are. They want to know the inspiration behind the rides and attractions. And they really like the Imagineering and the parks and resorts. So they're going to they're going to look at the windows on Main Street. And like you said, and hidden Mickey's. this is Mickeys the type of person or... that wants to do all the tours, the keys to the kingdom. Exactly. They love those tours. And Behind even the, the scenes look. And even the free tours, right? Like yeah. the one at the uh, Old Key West exactly. Resort. You should do the Conk Flats free tour, by the way, if you're staying at Disney's Old Key West Resort. It's, how long is it? Half an hour or something? Yeah, not long. But it's really, really cool. So if you're at all a historian or, and Amelia, you didn't even think you were going to like it. And did you? Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I think that one is, they made a lot of jokes in it, so they made it kid-friendly. It wasn't just a bunch of boring facts. Yeah. So those sorts of things are the Disney historian, but they, they'll usually have a camera with them and they're going to want to take lots of pictures and, you know, they could never even step on a ride and still be happy. They really appreciate the detail that goes into making a Disney park what it is. So that's the Disney historian, number four. All right, number five on your list. The Luxury Disney Traveler. Oh, another one that's near and dear to my heart. The Luxury Disney Traveler. They love the finer side of Disney travel. And what does it mean? Well, they want to do all the VIP events. 
Club level. Club level. Victoria and Albert. Victoria Grand and Albert. Yacht, all of the above. Basically, we talked about pay for play in the planning episode. This is what we call the rich Disney traveler. Yeah, the luxury Disney traveler loves anything you can pay for to get an edge. They're going to want to do it. They might not do them all, but they do appreciate the ability to pay for extra magic, pay for all the things that will give them a leg up. Uh, And they see the value in it for them to pay for those magical extras. This person may be a part of Club 33. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice. And they want to do a lot of the things that other people that you mentioned, like, or sorry, other things like the Grand One Yacht that a lot of people don't even know exists. So the luxury Disney traveler is going to seek out those high-end pay-for-play opportunities and take advantage of those so they have sort of a different angle. Or even the VIP tour. That You know, forget the park buster. They're just going to say, that's fine. I'm going to hire a park buster, (laughs) essentially, the VIP tour guide who's going to walk me through the park and tell me everything they know. I guess the VIP tour guides are sort of the ultimate park busters. Yes. People who get paid for busting the parks. Yeah, that's where, right. Where can I apply for that? Yeah, that is... Uh, Hi. That can... would be a sweet job, the plaids. Where can I spend all day in Disney and get paid? Hi, yes, I, I'd like to do that. All right, that was number five. And there is one category left. What do we call category number six of Disney travel the types? The Disney adventurer. The Disney adventurer. The Disney adventurer is a little bit like the carefree, but this slightly different. This is what I different. call the scenic route. Yes, good way to put it. So the Disney adventurer likes to chart their own path, so... You are a Disney adventurer if you like to discover things that the average Disney traveler isn't aware of, but not the VIP things like the other person. It could be, it could but be. also more. But also more. So they have a bit of planner in them because they want to know what exists out there that isn't the average thing that everybody does, but they're not obsessive about planning. They're, yeah. they're more about learning what's out there, what adventures there are. Can you think of some things that the Disney adventurer the might like planner? to do? But they also like going off plan. Exactly. Off the beaten track. So they have a plan, but then if they see something that's more excited, then the plan just goes right out the window. Here's how I describe them. They want to go where the crowds don't go. Yeah. So they'd rather be... Like speedboating. Surfing a typhoon lagoon. So if they're getting up early... Surging through the caves at Tom Sawyer Island. Yeah. They're, they're going to get up early to go surfing a typhoon lagoon, the Disney Adventure. Not necessarily to bust a park. They want to do cool stuff like that. Or the hot air balloon. Yes. They'll, they'd like the hot air balloon. Or Fort Wilderness is a bit of a playground for the Disney adventure, right? There's lots of stuff the adventurer would want to do there. Horseback, Horseback riding. riding. <laughs> Archery. And even the trails. You know, there's some... It's tra- really beautiful there. It is. There's some trails over by where the beach originally was. But it might where- all get ruined because of reflections. Yeah, but on the other side, away from, yes, a lot of it will. So if you're a Disney adventurer and you haven't go now ventured into Fort Wilderness, go there. I mean, yeah, their ideal Walt Disney World vacation is doing all those adventurous things, even like the Wild Africa Trek, right? They'd want to do that because that's pretty adventurous. Even the Chippendale Campfire Show, it's off the beaten track. They're going to seek out those adventures yeah. that the average Disney traveler doesn't know about or doesn't do. So... Our six travel types, the park buster, the Disney planner, the carefree Disney traveler, the Disney historian, the luxury Disney traveler, and the Disney adventurer. Now, how do you assess what you you are? So as you can see now, as we've been going through this, you're probably going, oh, that's me, or that's a little bit me. I have my percentages written down. But wait a minute. Before we get to that, I want to help our listeners figure out how to do this for themselves. So I'm going to throw one at you, okay? Here's how I look at this. Here's my self-assessment. I have a a sort of a sample question for you. I'm going to ask you a question, then I'm going to give you some answers, and you tell me which one best describes you. Okay. Okay? Or one or two of them. So what would your ideal magical moment be? All right? Okay. I'm going to give you a few examples. So you're a few. You may. Because that would be your Disney travel type. So you're, but don't pick them all. You might say I like them all, but the point is, which ones really resonate with you the most, right? That's how what we want to get to. Okay. Really, what's what's inside you? What's your core Disney travel type? So magical moments are things that we've talked about them a lot in the past on the show that you could get from a cast member where they give you a little bonus surprise. Here are some magical moments. I'll I'll read them all, then you tell me which ones resonate with you. 
Moment number one. You get an extra hour of bonus time on your Sea Racer speedboat rental. Woohoo! You get upgraded to a club level room or a suite or some room nicer <laughs> than you paid for. You get the inside scoop on some behind the scenes access from a cast member, something other people really don't know. You get anything offered for free and you'll be super happy about that. What do you mean anything? Like, hey, we're going to give you a free drink or a free cupcake or... Hey, we're going to give you a free upgrade. Yeah, anything. You're just, you're happy with something for free. You get the unattainable Disney dining reservation, something that is really hard to get and you score it. Or you get three extra fast passes as a magical moment, which has happened to us, that you can use however you want. Okay, so three of those sound like meh, and then the other three sound really good. Can I choose three or no? Yes, which three? Okay. And then I'll tell you where they fall, and you're going to tell me if this matches up what you thought you were. Okay, I I kind of get, like, which one is which. So, I'm, but there's a few I'm not really sure. So, I want the extra fast passes because... Then I don't have to wait in lines. Okay. <laughs> and which other ones hit with you? I and I also want the extra time on my speedboat racer. Okay. Because the sea racer. Those extra are very bonus short time. time. Yeah. And and then and then I get extra time on the water, and it's very cool. So it's good in the summer. And then I also want my upgrade because I like the luxury rooms. Okay. So you picked three of the six. So before... I wasn't allowed to pick all six. No, I mean. <laughs> The, the the reality is everyone would like everything, but the whole type, the I wasn't whole. Allowed to pick I'm sick. just illustrating how you're going to sort of think of yourself as the Disney travel DNA. Which things really are you more than others? Okay. So, how did you self assess yourself? Okay, what's Let's, your DNA, and then we'll see if it matches with mine. Oh, you, you want to know? You mine? go first because I've done. No, this. your DNA for me, based on those questions. What do you estimate my percentages? Oh, are? oh, I don't know your percentages, but do you want me to tell you what you picked? Yeah. Okay, you picked the Park Buster, which is getting three extra fast passes that you can use any way you like. A Park Park Buster will love that. You picked the Luxury Disney Traveler, getting your upgrade. And you picked the Disney Adventurer, getting extra bonus time on your Sea Racer speedboat rental. Now... Well, for the people playing at home, if, what if they picked the other things? What did they get then? The other ones are the inside scoop behind the scenes is the Disney Historian. Okay. The carefree Disney traveler is any any sort of free thing you're happy with. Oh, that's like, true. Like it's just like a bonus to your day. I guess and so. getting the unattainable reservation that, oh, I finally got that new restaurant. That's the Disney planner. Oh, they get super jazzed you. about stuff like that. Okay. So again, you were park buster, luxury traveler, and Disney adventurer. Tell me what you wrote down as your okay. Disney travel DNA. I have myself as everybody. All six? <laughs> yes. Okay. But, well, pretty much five. Let me explain. I don't see you as carefree, I'll my go friend. most. I'll go most to least. And I'll explain because okay, go ahead. I, I, I do understand. So I say that I'm 40% park buster because I do like to do a lot of the rides at the parks and I want the extra fast passes. But then again, sometimes I get tired and I want to go swimming. Okay. And I'm not a big line You're person. You're doing this in order, right? Yeah. From okay. like biggest most percentage to, least, right. to smallest percentage. And then... And I have two at 20. I have the Luxury Disney Traveler and the Disney Adventurer. Because I like all things luxury. And I also like to have some adventures behind the scenes. That You you know that, right? Yeah. I like, okay. I like expensive things. I so you're 40% Park Buster. You're 20% Luxury. You're 20% Disney Adventurer. So then the rest of these are small. So now I only have 20% right, for the rest of them. Which so, one is 10 Okay, so 10, I think I'm a little bit carefree didn't traveler because mm. I'm not you, okay? Like our fast pass could get canceled or a ride could go down and I don't really care that much. I cancel fast passes all the time. Yeah, because you want to go home. <laughs> no, just because. <laughs> because you don't want to wait for the so, fast pass. I mean, we'll see if they come back and how they run it. But a lot of times right now, I cancel them because like at Epcot, now, this is going to, whether or not Fast Passes come back, it's going to change because there's going to be more rides. But as it stood, there was only a couple you really needed Fast Passes for. But you, you like, you couldn't book Frozen and Soren, for example, because they're in the same bucket. But anyway, okay, that's fair. And so you're 5% historian and 5% Disney planner. Oh, no. No, 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 no. 
Let me explain thing to you. I'm 1% historian. No, you got to go by. <laughs> no, no, no. I care about very few small facts. Some are interesting, but most of them are boring. So you've gotten very granular here. I'm you're, very you're granular. You're 9% planner? I was going to do 5 and 5, but I plan more. Have you seen my phone calendar? Yeah, that's true. You do. Okay. <laughs> so basically, with those little ones, basically... <laughs> We'll take the top three. You see yourself as a park buster, a luxury traveler, an adventure. Yeah. And I would agree with that for you. I don't really see you as carefree 10%. <laughs> and you see yourself as carefree? Well, think of your aunts and uncles that we're talking about. I don't think that counts. You know how they are truly carefree. In fact, they couldn't care if they even entered a park. Occasionally, they'll go to a park, but eh. they can, that, they cannot. Yeah, because that's why I'm only 10%. I have a rough idea and if it's somewhere along the lines, maybe off on a separate adventure, I'm good. All right. Now, and what's your percentage, Daddy? You, know, you just want to tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> now, well, I, I mean, if the shoe fits. I think I've done a fairly good. Now, you at 40%. My top tier is 30%. Do you know what I put as my number one? I'm hoping luxury yes. because everything else will be a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely put myself in the luxury Disney traveler bracket because I do like paying for the high-end stuff and i you know like is an understatement we don't i don't do blindly every single thing but i'll pick things don't you daddy well i'm not like i said before i'm not paying 12 grand to see the cinderella suite so i'm not doing that tour but i do like doing the pay for play and even if i don't do them all i like the fact that they're there for you to do if you want to do like the they're early, available yeah they're available to you and then i have two at 20 percent so the Disney historian, yes, because I do, as you know, really love all the history and Walt well, Disney and the parks and every all the little details. In fact, we just spent quite a few episodes talking about some of oh, those yeah. things. And I put myself as 20% Disney planner. Oh, yeah. So really, uh, 70%, I'm those three things. And you yeah. had actually 80% in your first three. So that really is the most core of your Disney travel DNA. And I would say you are more park buster than me, and I'm more yeah, luxury. you are not a park buster. But we can overlap because I can do park buster by paying for a VIP tour. <laughs> yeah, and then we I'm can not still bust really the sure park. that counts, but okay. Well, I'm saying we can get along. So remember at the beginning yeah. when I talked about it's important to know what the people are like in your party. Like if you tried to go out with one of your aunts who's a carefree Disney traveler and said, okay, we're, I want you to come with me today. We're getting up. We're going to hit the park. We're going to be there before rope drop. And they're going to go, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not doing that. But if they're truly carefree, then maybe they won't care. They may or may, yeah, they may or may not. We'll see. And then anyway, my last two are, I put myself as 15% park buster <laughs> and 15% adventurer. Because I do. do I, I love going in the parks. You know that. I'll go in the parks every day, but on a limited run. And I do know the parks the inside park of that. The doesn't mind lines. You know, that's why I'm a low end. Yeah. I don't have all the aspects, but I do know how to bust the parks. I do know all the shortcuts. I know where to go. You think when. 45 minutes is too long? I think 25 minutes is too long. Exactly. If you, it's you over, see my point? If it's over 15, maybe 20, I don't want to wait in line. Real park buster, ladies and gentlemen. Real park buster here. Yeah, that's why that's why it's not my top tier. It's on the low end. And then adventure, because I do love doing those cool things off the beaten track. Yeah, right? I like looking for those things. But then again, you did wait two hours for Hollywood at Hollywood. Remember when Brockman was down? Yeah, and that was also you could almost call that carefree. <laughs> no, because mm. <laughs> we were the only one. I wouldn't go so far. And that did result in a magical moment because we stood there chatting with the uh, cast member. Can I edit your percentages? No, you cannot. That is how I view myself. Can I tell you my idea of you? Sure. Why don't you tell me what you think I, I you, am? You, I think you're 40% the luxury Disney traveler. Right. Because you have a problem with luxury. You just, you need the luxury. And Victoria and Albert. Or you have to do something luxury every trip. That's true. You, ha okay. you have to do it. And then I, I agree with the 20% historian. Historian. But I might do 25 and 15. You're not that much of an adventure, Daddy. Oh, wait. No, sorry. It was planner. That, uh, yeah. My notes. I'm a planner. What do you... I have You're more whole... planner than historian. Well, only by necessity because you have to plan. Yeah. So it's almost like in order to have a carefree... Not carefree, but... I'd say 25 and 20 and then I'd only give you... 
So here's the difference. Yeah. So if you're listening at home and you're doing this. I think this, you plan a bit more. You have to plan to some degree a vacation. Yeah. But the planner enjoys that. Like they really love doing the plans. And, you know, the spreadsheet. I don't love doing it. Then why do you do it? Because you have to, really, no. to mm. some degree. Unless you're a care, s- unless yes. you're a carefree. To some degree. But I don't have carefree on my list. Not to your degree. Right. I don't have carefree on my list, so I have to plan a little bit. You know, otherwise, a carefree might not care. But I do. I, I do want to get in the parks or get fast passes if, if it's fast pass or right now it's park pass. Whatever it is, I want to be sure that I'm at least doing that thing on that day. So I have to plan. But I'm not a planner who goes, oh, I don't look forward to the deadlines to start planning. I sort of dread it, but I do it. And why are you up? Because why do you wake me up at seven? Okay, fast passes are live nearly before you go to school. We're gonna we can choose these fast passes. Because that's what I just explained. You have to plan to some degree. Yes. Otherwise, you know, you'll be shut out. And a carefree might not worry about that, but I'm but I'm not carefree. (laughs) As you can see, I have no carefree on my list. And I'm sure you did not have any carefree on my list either. No. But also, I think there are days when I plan to be carefree. There are days when I don't need to be anywhere, so then it's... But if you plan something, because you start it, you say, okay, we're having dinner at this time, we're having fast passes at this time, so then I'm like, okay, we need to do this, otherwise daddy's going to freak out because he's not at all carefree. So then I schedule, I'm like, okay, we're catching the monorail at this time, and then we're doing that, so you make me crazy. Because otherwise you're going to, you know, go crazy because and you're not careful. So you're illustrating my point as you we make, get close to the end of crazy? this episode that it's important to know. So you know how I am. And so you adapt accordingly. I have to plan an exceptional amount so that daddy does not go crazy. That's because I have no carefree in me. Not even a little bit. Well, I'll try to take that into account next time. Anyway, my friends, we hope you enjoyed this what is your Disney travel DNA episode? I'm going to put these categories in the show notes. So if you didn't write it down and play along, have a look and let us know what is your Disney travel DNA because it would be fun to see what you think. But let us know on these six, what is your Disney travel DNA? I think I have another variation of the carefree traveler. What is it? The park free traveler. Well, you don't want to go too granular. Right, they, they're broad categories that pretty much cover anybody. So yeah. I don't think you can find somebody who doesn't fit into these. That's the point. It's true. So let us know what you are, and uh, we'd love to hear it. And we hope you enjoyed your Disney travel DNA. And it's important to know you and your family before you go, especially if it's your first time. And if it's your first time, you're going to sort of have to guess basically just what your personality is if you haven't been there before. So thanks for listening, everyone, and be sure to visit us on social media at 1923 Main Street, pretty much on every channel, and 1923mainstreet.com. And check out our Patreon page. Yes, if you love the show and you'd love to become a supporter, we do have some goodies for people to thank you for your support for the show. So check us out at patreon.com slash 1923mainstreet, or simply please tell your friends about the podcast if you enjoy it. And we'd love to get new listeners to join our faithful group of followers. Thank you so much for listening. If it's your first time, thanks for dropping in. If you're a return visitor, thanks for coming back. And we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.